Olympus Mons is the largest volcano in our solar system, and that, my friends, is a fact of life. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to That's the Facts of Life, where we go through all the topics that matter to you, bring you just the facts. Today's topics include 2015's primary considerations, Finner's background investigations, and alternative interpretations. Before we get there, though, let's check in on that Finner naughty list. Topping the list this week is a firm and CEO combo. The firm was expelled for defrauding and misleading investors by manipulating the price of Fibercell stock amongst a long list of other offenses. Along with the CEO, two other employees were involved in artificially inflating the stock's price. The, the other employees were both suspended and fined accordingly. The CEO is barred for his gross misappropriation of investors' funds. He fraudulently sold stock and notes in the firm's parent company without disclosing the firm's poor financial conditions. He then misled investors by paying dividends to early investors with funds generated by new sales of the parent company's securities. And if this wasn't enough, he also improperly spent the firm's money to the tune of $600,000 on business expenses. Uh, business expenses that you would expect, like tattoos, <laughs> firearms, alcohol, and pet care. Finner originally filed a temporary cease and desist in September of 2013. So let's see, that's only 17 months to reach a verdict. Like 10 dog years. In other news, the SEC and Finner recently had their annual Best Friends Forever Slumber Party, in which they determined this year's priorities. The SEC had three priorities that they're focusing on, which were retail investors, market-wide risks, and data analytics. Finner said to that, let's add two more. Standards of ethical behavior, development of strong supervisory and risk management systems, development, marketing, and sale of novel products and services, management of conflicts of interest, and alignment of firm and customer interests. Oh, uh, that and the alignment of the security industry's chi. Namaste. Speaking of 2015 priorities, the SEC has granted an accelerated approval of Finner Rule 3110E, uh, which is also known as Finner's new background investigation rule. This will replace old NASD Rule 3110E and will become effective on July 1st. The new rule is meant to streamline the language of the previous rule by providing that each member shall ascertain by investigation the good character, business reputation, and so on and so forth. Um, how about just saying leave no stone unturned? It's easier to me. Rule 3110E also requires firms to implement written policies and procedures that verify the accuracy and completeness of the applicant's Form U4, and conduct a national search of reasonable available public records to verify the form's accuracy and completeness. Searches should include things such as name, address, criminal record, favorite color, <laughs> bankruptcy records, dogs, or cats, and business records. Firms can conduct searches using credit reports, services of a specialized provider, reputable public databases, or the Oracle of Delphi. The downside of this, though, is that many public records are not available online. Uh, and many believe these new requirements will greatly increase compliance time and firm's costs. I, for one, see this as a career advancement opportunity uh, for broker-dealers because now they can moonlight as private investigators. <laughs> Perhaps the biggest irony of it all, though, is that the firm's requirement to validate the information on their U4s. Uh, which, of course, is the basis of Finner's Broker Check tool, a system that we've learned is already flawed with inaccurate information. Finally, make sure you're careful when using the A word around Finner. That's right, alternative investing is big these days and will be singled out by, Finner's, by Finner because it's being touted as better than conventional offerings. Uh, Finner is concerned that advisors and customers will not understand how the funds will respond to various marketing conditions. Mr. Ketchum recently said, we are concerned that this is a bit of an accident waiting to happen because alternatives are complex. You know, like multiplying or dividing fractions. Well, that'll do it for today. To learn more about industry topics, check out the Compliance Digest, or come see us again in another two weeks for another episode of That's the Facts of Life. And in case you didn't know, you're never stuck in traffic, you are traffic. And that, my friends, is a fact of life.